So you've inherited a property and you want to keep that house. You want to buy your other siblings or other beneficiaries out of that house and keep it. Well, today I'm going to break down some steps you really need to consider and understand how this could play out. Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Stick around. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in Silicon Valley, specializing in selling houses and trust, probate, inherited properties. And a lot of times I meet clients that one of the siblings, but one person wants to keep the house, whether they want to move in or they want to keep it as a rental property. And it can go one of two ways. Sometimes the other siblings are fine if the one sibling can financially handle that big purchase. And sometimes they're not. So, Either way, I'm going to talk about the first things you need to consider and then I'll talk a little bit about when there are some issues and not everyone's in agreement. But the step number one, you have to get a professional appraisal done on the property and do not just get one appraisal. You have to remember, even though appraisal report is a formal document, it is always still just an opinion of value. There's no way to scientifically data proof a value of a home. It's just not possible. So I always tell my clients get at least two professional appraisals. Okay, I know it costs a little bit more. Typically in Silicon Valley, it's around $600 for an appraiser, sometimes less, but sometimes more. $600, so now it's $1,200. But that $1,200 could save you maybe upwards of $50,000, depending on how those values come in. Um, my other recommendation is when you get those two appraisers, really try and find some that don't just work for banks. If you just go on Google and look up appraisals, a lot of times those appraisers are working for banks and they're used to sort of turning and burning, getting the values just to match what the sale price is on a house. In this case, there is no sale price. Someone hasn't done legwork to figure out what the value is and other realtors haven't figured out the value to make an offer for their clients. So it's kind of arbitrary. No one knows this house hasn't been on the market any time in the recent history, most likely. So try and find uh, an appraiser either through a realtor that works with inherited property sales a lot. Someone like myself, I know of two appraisers that really focus on time of death appraisals. So when the family member, the last family member that owned that house dies, the tax man needs to know what that value was or else you could get charged back taxes from the time they purchased the house and you don't even want to go there. So there are appraisers that focus on time of death appraisals and when there's a divorce and they need to find the value. So they're not just working for banks and sort of churning and burning these reports. Not to say that some that do work for the banks can't be really good too, but try and find at least one that really specializes in just working for other consumers and, and works with attorneys on a regular basis. So get those two appraisal values, professional values. More than likely, they're gonna be a little bit different. Hopefully they're within $10,000 of each other. And then I also recommend in a, a realtor, a realtor that knows that area that can give you a really qualified professional value of what they think that house could sell for in its current condition. We're not talking about if you renovated it and fixed it up because the neighbors down the street had a fixed up house and it sold for X, Y, Z. And the neighbor, you know, the other way had some upgrades, but not as many, like, don't go there. Find the value of the house in its current condition. That's all that matters. Then you go to the siblings and talk about, does everyone agree with this value? Round numbers here, let's just say it's $1.5 million. Does everyone agree to that price? Great. Now, if you're the person that wants to buy the, the siblings out, how are you going to pay for that house and give each sibling what they deserve? So let's just say two other siblings, total of three of you, and it was left to all three of you equally. So you have to figure out how to come up. So again, if the example is the house is worth $1.5 million, there's three of you splitting it equally, you owe each of your other siblings $500,000. So let's just say you need to get a loan. You don't have one point, or you don't have a million dollars sitting around to just hand to your two siblings. You can go to the bank and hopefully you have at least the 20% to put it back. So you can go to a bank and basically refinance that house 
Um, I don't know if there hasn't been a loan on the property. You're going to have to refinance that house or purchase it or sell it to get it out of that, uh, you know, your parents name for their loan, their mortgage. The bank won't let you just, you know, carry on with that payment typically. So you're going to have to refinance anyway, if you're holding on to the house and you're going to have to figure out how to get a million dollars out of that and like a cash out refinance essentially is usually what they call it and so you have to put some money down typically and then get the million dollars out and hand it over to your two siblings so that's kind of the easiest way and then you go back to the attorney you have to make sure everything's done legally you have to get a quick claim deed you have to change the title um, make sure it's in your name make sure it's all done right you don't want a couple years down the road to find out that well you just shook hands and you gave them their money and everything was amicable but you never know what could come down the road and maybe a sibling comes on really hard financial times and they see that the house is now worth two million dollars and they don't think it's fair well if everything was done legally and you are the legal owner and you purchased it at 1.5 million dollars they have nothing to come back you also want to make sure uh, you know, the attorney is making sure there's no liens against that house. You want to make sure the property taxes are all paid off. Everything is a clean slate from the day you purchase it from your siblings and it's all done correctly. So that's when it goes pretty amicably. Now, there are times when it isn't so amicable. Maybe one sibling has been living in the house caretaking for your parents, but they don't have the money to buy the other siblings out, but they feel like they have a right to stay in the house, so they don't want you to be able to buy it. They don't want to have to sell it, and it can get ugly. So if it really gets to the point that the siblings can't agree on selling it to one sibling so in this case if you can't agree on selling the house everyone's not on the same page there is a legal proceeding i'm telling you it's very costly so and it can take some time so really really try and work with your siblings to come up with an amicable resolution i can give you a couple ideas here in a sec but i'll finish this thought if you really can't get to that point of keeping it amicable the lawyer can file a partition lawsuit with the courts and it's a legal process and it is ugly like i said it's costly it's ugly it takes time and it can really i mean damage relationships lifelong and maybe you're at that point you're like annie i don't want a relationship with them anyway but just keep in mind the legal costs a lot so think about that but some things i've seen um clients do in the past to you know if they can't agree everyone's just like you know one person wants it they want it to move in or they want it as a rental property but one person has already been living there like i said like maybe they were the caretaker and they want more time in the house come up with a different solution that maybe one sibling can stay but now put a time frame on it maybe give them six months maybe a year maybe they just need to decompress it's super emotional i mean these inherited houses are so emotional they're not just a physical structure they've held so many memories and emotions and a lot of times it's really hard for some people to let that go so come up with a time frame and while that person lives in the house they have to pay fair market value rent and that gets divided by the other siblings um, and the cost to you know keep running the house their rent would have to cover the cost to keep running the house the cost for the property taxes and money to the other two siblings and sometimes that sibling might not have that luxury of finances like that um, but this the sibling that's in the house does have to understand everyone has a legal right to that property so just because they've lived there it doesn't give them the right to stay for free um, but that's the biggest thing I think is having a time frame set and coming from a point of compassion. If you, to get what you want, come with compassion and kindness. When you come, you know, guns a blazing and you're angry and you're mad and this is the way it is and, da, 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 and you're just pushing yourself against a brick wall and you're not helping yourself, help yourself by coming with kindness. And I'm telling you, it, I've seen, I've seen really ugly situations diffuse quickly when someone takes a deep breath and just even validates another person's feelings hey i'm so sorry i know this is harder for you than it is for me i know you have different attachments or whatever it is 
Um, but really, let's work together. Let's not do this to mom and dad's legacy. Let's not ruin this. We have a whole next chapter that we all have to start planning for and let's work together. Little things like that make a big difference. So, okay, so back to the steps. Make sure you get at least two appraisals. Get a realtor to provide a value for that home. Get legal representation to make sure all the documents are done in Santa Clara County and Northern California. I would get a title company that would work with the attorney too to make sure any liens, they look up the title history. You never know, maybe mom and dad had you know, a personal loan to someone and that's a lien against the house. You gotta make sure those things are covered out of the sale so that you don't just take ownership and then find out six months later, mom and dad owed you know, 150,000 to somebody. Now you're stuck with that as opposed to dividing it between the siblings. Um, so get the legal title and make sure it's done correctly and then figure out the finances. You need a lender. I have referrals for that too. Uh, so I hope that helps. I know it can be really amicable. Sometimes you just need someone to bounce some of this off. Please reach out and talk to me. I'm happy to do that. Uh, so I hope that helped a little bit. If you have any other questions, drop them below. And until next time, have a great one.